Hi everyone, welcome to this session. There are hack and and slider links for you to use. You can just check it out in YouTube. We have chat room or interactive object in Gather. The following talk is called Knowledge Graph Data Modeling with Terminus Data, presented by Cherry. Please join me in welcome speaker. Hello. Hi there. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, let me get started. So, uh, oop. so yeah, I'm Cherk Acheri. Um, so, I am a developer relations lead in Terminus DB. So, uh, it doesn't mean a lot of things, but the thing is, like, uh, I am mainly um, really want to educate and help uh, developers to uh, understand uh, Terminus DB and also how to use Terminus DB to make them uh, maybe the projects to go better and more powerful and have the, their life better. So um, I was a data scientist. So, um, so I understand like if you are also using Python to handle data. Um, so I understand uh, your challenges, uh, you know, when you know, I also uh, you know, use all the stuff that you're probably using, for example, uh, Pandas, uh, NumPy, Jupyter Notebook, all this stuff uh, was my favorite tool in the past. So um, also, I, I quite like some of them even now. But um, yeah, I, I, I would uh, we speak the same language, I would say. I'm also a Pythonista. I uh, love Python um, because it's an open source language. And also, the community is great. Um, so I'm also the uh, maintainer of the Python client in uh, Terminus DB. So if you have questions about uh, using it, then you feel free to ask me as well. Um, I love open source uh, software. So I'm very lucky that uh, Terminus DB is uh, open source software and I'm working uh, with a team uh, to, you know, um, together to develop this tool and make it, uh, you know, help other people. So uh, that's, that's really good. Um, so uh, there are some, uh, you know, contact details that uh, you can join the Terminus TV's Discord if you are interested in what you are seeing in the workshop today. And also, um, or, you know, just send me some uh, something uh, on Twitter if you uh, have other Python stuff that you want to talk about. Um, so yeah, this is my avatar. <laughs> I, I have it uh, you know, some an artist that draw me a few years ago. So, um, that's, uh, that's me. So um, hello, everybody. So uh, this is a, because uh, normally this workshop, uh, how I would run it is more uh, interactive um, environment. So uh, now usually I would ask people to introduce themselves in the chat and all this, but I guess uh, you can also do that uh, later uh, when we have the Q&A session or when we uh, go to chat in the Gather Town and you can also introduce yourself <laughs> to me to know, uh, I want to know uh, who you are and what you're interested in uh, about Python. Uh, also, how may uh, you may use uh, a graph database like Terminus DB. So, um, so this workshop, uh, we will do a lot of things. So uh, we have an hour and 20 minutes today. So we got to do a lot of things together. So, um, you will have to, uh, you know, you, you will learn about semantic knowledge graph. So yesterday, uh, people watched the talk that I uh, presented. So um, there's a lot of question about, oh, what is a knowledge graph? Uh, what is, you know, what's the difference? And uh, today I will answer all these questions. Um, so also, how is it different from the relational database, which is what uh, most of us are using right now, uh, like MySQL, Postgres, uh, so those are relational database. Um, like how how is knowledge graph working differently than working, let's say, with a lot of Excel spreadsheets or a C a CSV files? Um, we will also talk about how a knowledge graph is constructed, how we can um, describe information in a graph format. Um, so at the end, uh, so those will be more like a uh, knowledge sharing. At the end, we would uh, do something together. Um, so 
if you want to uh, do it together, you feel free to do it. I would um, have some information about how to download it um, later. Uh, so, and I will also give you some time to install it if you want to do it together. Um, so that would be uh, the second half of uh, this session. So, um, yeah, we would try out the document API in Terminus DB. So, um, just a few weeks ago, we uh, have the V10 uh, or beta version uh, of the, uh, you know, of uh, Terminus DB and the Python client. So, um, we got to have some, basically, the tool that we are using today is brand new. So, we're going to have a lot of exciting stuff going on. <laughs> So, um, so this session is for everybody, um, even without any uh, knowledge, then you could totally uh, enjoy the lecture together. Um, but there will be a bit of Python coding, like I said, a uh, kind of, um, you know, hands-on exercise at the second half. So I would uh, do a demonstration, feel free to follow along. Um, so that would be uh, require some basic knowledge of coding in Python. Um, so if I'm going too fast, or uh, so maybe uh, uh, you can let me know, uh, maybe the host can also uh, let me know if you see any people uh, commenting uh, that I'm going too fast. Um, that, uh, But I would try to do it step by step so you can follow along, even if you can't do it uh, live, you're too busy. <laughs> but uh, you can also, you know, uh, do it later when I um, kind of uh, have a, you know, I would uh, give this uh, as a file to people who are interested. So um, you can also follow along afterwards as well. So uh, this is the agenda that I have used, normally used. Uh, of course, we don't have 75 minutes today, uh, but uh, it would be more or less uh, the same. You know, we would be having introduction and then a presentation a lecture for around 60 minutes. It may be a little bit shorter because um, usually people would jump in and ask questions and then a break. Uh, we'll see how much time we have. It could be five to 15 minutes. And then I would do a demonstration. So uh, uh, so it won't be 75 minutes. <laughs> um, so afterward, there will be a, a conclusion of what we have done today. Okay. Um, so. Um, what is Terminus DB? It's a very new name, I know. It's a very young um, technology as well. Um, so Terminus DB is an open source knowledge graph database that um, you can do things that is like Git. So um, I guess some of you have used Git before that you can do something we call revision control, which means you can time travel, you can go back if you have done something that you want to, um, you know, that you don't like, you want to go back, you can do it. Um, also, you can make a branch uh, of your work, you know, and do something, um, you know, you can try out something. If you don't like it, you can go back to the branch, or if you like it, you can merge it to the branch, uh, to the main branch. Um, also, you can collaborate with people because Two of you can work in two different branches and combine your work together later. Um, so um, the idea is that uh, we want to create something that go beyond just um, database uh, that could make people more productive. Um, so uh, it's you know it's something that we think that is lagging in um, the. Right now, when people handle data, a uh, lot of times, you know, there will be backups, and then uh, you can really merge backups. You can only time travel back to the backups if anything happened. Um, but if it's a revision control, there's also other advantages, like you can manage access, uh, who can access to what in the database. So the advantage will be uh, companies can, um, you know, the different teams normally, uh, you know, because of all the security, uh, you can't have people accessing all the information, um, you know, without this distinguished, right? Uh, you know, this distinguished between who you are and what you can access. 
for example, a company will have a lot of data about the employee. So this uh, information may be accessible to the HR team, the human resources team, but uh, other employee may not uh, uh, may not granted access to those because um, you know that's uh, personal information. It shouldn't be shared with everybody. If you want to share it yourself, that's your uh, your own you know choice, not for everybody. So. Um, so that would uh, require managed access and uh, having a knowledge graph will have advantage of that. Uh, just, you know, uh, a knowledge graph can hold a lot of complex data. So you can have metadata of telling people about this, uh, you know, this graph or this object. So I'll talk a little bit more uh, when we have a uh, dive deeper because now it sounds a little bit too, uh, too good. <laughs> so but you will understand what I mean in a bit. Um, so, um, we have relational database. That's uh, what we are doing right now. Uh, most of the time, uh, people just have different tables. And then, so if you work in a company, uh, you have multiple teams. Uh, if you are a data scientist, like what I used to be, um, sometimes you have to fetch different data from different teams because of the uh, access management issues. So the different team may store their data that are, you know, not supposed to share um, within their own database. And you have to fetch different data from different database and then combine them together. So that's a lot of effort um, required before you can really do some analysis or find, you know, uh, have your finding and present it. So um, there was a kind of a saying uh, within my, uh, data scientist friends is that, oh, half of your job is to get the data and clean it. <laughs> so yes, uh, so, um, I know that data scientists would love to do more fun stuff, which is um, analyzing the data or doing machine learning, kind of some kind of uh, deep learning, cooler stuff, uh, AI stuff, but not cleaning the data and fetching the data for weeks. So, um, to avoid that, uh, it's best to uh, put data all together. Um, you may say that, oh, uh, how about a data lake, right? Data lake is quite flexible. You can put everything in it. You can put them in different buckets and have maybe control over who have access to which bucket. But the problem uh, with that is that there's, uh, it's like a, a really, it's like a lake. Let's, uh, if you want to find something specific in a lake, that's quite difficult. Like finding a needle uh, inside a lake is impossible. So a lot of times you will have to ask someone who process the knowledge about the data or who put the data in, uh, where do you put it? What does it mean? Uh, lots of questions. So it's still not very productive. It will still require a lot of um, a lot of knowledge, um, so it kind of defeat the purpose of putting things conveniently uh, together in one place. So to solve this problem is to have certain type of structure that gives you the flexibility of um, uh, doing a lot of um, a customization, okay? To um, so you can first of all model your data in a way that is more flexible. So it's not just like a flat. Uh, I would say that the, the the spreadsheets or CSV they are flat. They are two D, but uh, a structure inside something so flexible would be like three D structure. You can do a lot of different um, things in it. You can be very nested inside. Um, without worrying that, oh, how am I going to flatten it? <laughs> and also, um, you can, like I said, have access control, have metadata about the data itself, um, sitting within the data. So um, there is like less documentation needed because the, um, because the documentation is the metadata. So um, I would think of it as if imagine a company store everything in a um, graph database, a knowledge graph like Terminus DB, 
uh, then data scientists can access the data easily. But the advantage would be they can also put the data um, back in this um, this space, this lake or universe or whatever um, with their own structure. So it's uh, everything is in one place, really, uh, even after the data is clean and analyzed, uh, you know, some finding is done, you can put everything back in. So next time, if someone doing something related, they don't have to do it from the scratch again, from the CSVs, from raw data. They can just use what you're finding and then do something extra. So uh, really it's uh, very convenient. So, um, so Terminus DB uh, specifically is open source, so it's free. That's why today you can um, download and try it together. We also have a cloud service, but that would be a pay service. But we are now in uh, public beta. You can still sign up and try it for free uh, if you want to. It's not necessary for today, but uh, uh, there's uh, something extra available um, with Terminus X. I will show you a little bit at the end. But today mainly is about Terminus DB, which is open source and free. Um, it's on the Docker image, so you may need to have Docker in your computer. Um, you may want to download it now if you want to follow along, uh, if you don't have Docker. Um, so also, uh, it's because it's open source, there's, uh, you know, people can just like uh, have a lot of inference about how we develop the product. Uh, the team always talk to people. We have um, an hour, um, an office hour. Uh, every Thursday uh, in um, in the afternoon uh, European time, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it may not be uh, convenient for people for folks like uh, you all that uh, maybe in the APAC time zone. But um, but we are we are happy to just like you know if you send a message in the chat, we will check it out uh, when we are you know when we are in our office hour or our working time. <laughs> um, also, you can leave GitHub issues. Uh, we develop and everything. Is up in out in the open, so you can see our progress. When is the milestone? When is the plan release? And um, all these issues that someone may encounter a bug and open an issue on our GitHub, and we would uh, you know investigate and let you know uh, what's the progress. <laughs> um, so it's. Uh, that's why I love open source, right? Um, a graph database uh, is means that, like I said, is uh, is storing data in three D instead of two D. Um, so everything is stored in triples, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, and it uh, everything is expressed in relation. So that's why it's also sometimes called semantic graph or knowledge graph because it is um, almost like describing a world. So it's it's quite cool. <laughs> Also, uh, it allows, like I said before, to uh, revision control and collaborate. So it's not something that is alien to you. If you are a Git user, then you know what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, other things like um, it's a uh, you know. Um, the, we have now the new uh, document API. So building a schema, especially with the Python client, is uh, fair, I would say relatively easy. So if you, you know, um, if you're using, let's say, a Python application conjunction with a, um, a SQL database, let's say, you have to get an engine uh, to, uh, to, to that uh, database. Um, also, you will have to have ORM, so that's something, if you are a Django user, you know, uh, inside there's ORM, which uh, convert your Python models, data models, into a SQL query and talk to the backend. Um, but in Terminus DB, with the advantage of the document API, it's already um, very object oriented, I would say. And with the Python clients, you can just do this uh, data modeling directly. So building a schema is just like defining some classes in Python. Um, the uh, Python client, uh, I don't have to say more, it's just uh, 
easy to use for Python users like you and me. Um, also, uh, there is this interactive graph presentation that um, lets you visualize a graph uh, in an interactive format if you use it in uh, Jupyter Notebook or you can export it as a HTML. So that's uh, using the D3 library in JavaScript. So that's why it's interactive. Um, you can zoom in, zoom out, or move the nodes around. So that's way better than uh, something like you know, network X that is a static graph. If you have many, many nodes, then it's uh, very difficult to visualize. Also, it's fully customizable. You can change the color of different type of things, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the only catch is this is not available today, as of today. Um, it was available in version four, um, but because uh, we just have this new release, so everything needs to be updated. Uh, we will eventually update this uh, interactive presentation library uh, in the future, but right now uh, it's not available yet, so please be patient. Um, so like I said, uh, Terminus DB is open source and available for free on Docker Hub. Um, so uh, it's a Docker image. If you have Docker in your computer, it should be fairly easy to um, install. Uh, to make it even easier, we have make a bootstrap rep, uh, repo on GitHub. So that's basically just a Docker script that uh, lets you spin up the container and uh, you know uh, plug it into your local host pod very easily. So I would recommend it uh, you use this conjunction as well. Uh, I'll give you more time and show you uh, detailed instructions later. Um, so yeah, we have two clients working, the Python client and JavaScript client. So people found it quite useful to use uh, because they can uh, build a schema with Python client uh, very easily. And uh, so if they use it with a web application, so uh, maybe they can use JavaScript to um, you know, insert the data, query the data, and all this stuff. So it's quite useful. Um, so now it uh, coming to the knowledge part uh, is the the basics about how we gotta think in three D. <laughs> so we will talk about what is a triple, what is the quad. So. Um, what's the difference between uh, data in 3D, so a graph data model, and data in 2D uh, or 2Ds, because there's uh, many spreadsheets, so it's like uh, many 2D data. Um, so that's called relational database. So what's the difference between the two? Um, also, um, we have some terms that we use a lot of times, uh, like object or subdocument, um, documents, and other stuff, <laughs> right? And also um, properties, uh, how is property work in uh, the graph database? And um, also how to uh, represent a data in 2D into a 3D knowledge graph. So uh, we will learn that with example. So um, a triple, so um, triple, you know, um, just like a lot of things that are related to the number three. Uh, so uh, you will see what, what is these three things, right? And um, quote, I would uh, also explain later. So a uh, knowledge graph, uh, which sometimes is called a semantic data model or, um, you know, resource description framework data model. So a uh, lot of names here. So. Uh, they just mean one thing, that everything is described in um, free um, entities, free stuff, with free things, right? <laughs> um, so uh, we call them subject, predicate, object. So now you would think, well, it sounds familiar if you have learned a language, like, uh, for example, if you learn a second language, like English, then in schools, your teacher will be, oh, you know, um, Simon say something. So it's like, oh, subject, object, and there's an action. So almost like this. 
so um, there's a subject, an object, so two things. And then uh, in semantic graph, we have a predicate, not just action. It could be anything um, to describe the relation between the two. So examples, uh, apple is red. So um, apple, uh, subject, red is an object. So it's not necessarily like as the English language need to be something. It could be, you know, red is a color. So it's also something in some sense, um, but it's just like apple is red. So it's, it's, it's the relation between the two that describe apple is red. It's not, because uh, you can change it to apple. It's not red, right? So, uh, so that's very important. The predicate, the relations between the two, what does it mean? Um, Chuck teaches a workshop. So again, you know, uh, subject, action, object. Uh, or cow loves duck. So uh, we, in Terminus DB, we love animals. <laughs> so the uh, the whole team are animal lovers. So um, my colleague always uh, used the example of a cow and duck uh, love story between them. So that's why we have these uh, cute um, uh, mascot you see on the first slide that is a mixture of a cow and a duck. So they have a baby. So, <laughs> um, so now I would uh, usually ask people um, what example you can think of. So I would give you maybe five seconds to think of some examples. And then um, you don't have to tell me right now, but um, think of some examples and try to, if you are in a room by yourself like me, then you can say it out loud for yourself as well. So, um, yes, that's really good. I'm sure that some of you already have some examples. Um, for example, here I have a uh, cow says moo and uh, cow is happy. Um, that says quack and uh, maybe duck ask a question or uh, cows have four legs and then ducks have wings, let's say. So uh, that's, um, so that's this picture. So I describe things in the picture, like uh, some kids in a kindergarten, right? <laughs> um, it's uh, it's very simple. It looks very silly. Uh, where like kids can do that, um, but together they describe a whole picture. So using triples together, and um, it will give you an understanding of the words. So. The picture before is if you ask a child um, to, you know, describe things, right? So they may describe things in triples and they're exploring this world. They're exploring this world in the picture of there's a cow, there's a duck. They are talking to each other. They seem happy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so uh, you can think of it as an element of the world, of uh, the knowledge about the world understanding, exploring the world. So that's uh, really cool. So that's, uh, that's triple. Um, and how about quads? So uh, in this picture, if you, so this is cow duck, by the way. So it's a cow and uh, got ducks uh, licks. So it's, a, it's the love child of the duck cow and a duck, I guess. So, um, uh, so if you describe things in here, so you can ask a child and then child A may say, oh, cow that says moo. But child B may say, no, 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 cow that says meow. So uh, what's going on? Um, oh, because there's two cow ducks here and they're exactly the same, but um, they are just maybe sitting in two different universe. So this is, um, for example, this is version A, this is uh, version B. So version A, cow does say smooth, version B, cow does say meow. How can I distinguish them? Because go back to the uh, Terminus DB where I describe how the vision control work. If you are working on a database, your colleagues working on a database, 
uh, you both make some changes, right? So you make changes, so you make cow duck say smooth. Your collie makes some changes, make cow duck say smell. So they are different, okay, in different branches. So later, when you try to join them together and compare the difference, how can you describe these two cow duck? Because they are the same thing. They may be a branch from the same cow duck, but now they are saying different things. So you have to say, this cow duck A is different from this cow duck B because one says moo, the other says meow. So you have to have a way of distinguishing these two cow ducks, right? So version A and version B versus version B. So um, if you just use a triple, we may have a problem. So that's why we have to add an extra identifier. Instead of saying cow duck says moo, you can say cow duck says moo in my version. So the last information in my version is the quote, uh, makes it a quote. So that's the extra information, three plus one is four. <laughs> so now we have four piece of elements in this information. So the triple and the last bit, the last bit is a graph identifier. So that's in my version. So it would be cat says meow in your version. So they are different. So the last piece of information can distinguish them. And it makes it not just three elements, but four elements. So it's called quad. So uh, as you may know, quad is uh, related to the number four. So that's why it's called quad. It's very straightforward, right? Um, so now you can cross reference different elements in different graphs or versions or pictures in this case. So uh, that's about halfway through. Um, so I will now dive into talking about how the graph data model and relational database model are different. So like I always says, um, relational database model, uh, which is also SQL database, um, uh, a lot of 2D tables. <laughs> so um, they have rows, which is rows and columns. And usually there will be one column that is called a primary, primary key. And there are also, it could be other keys as well. So um, it's the most common format is a CSV com, a format, which is comma separated values. So it's just a plain text file. Uh, you can normally is end with .csv, but it could be end with other things as well because it's just a plain text. Um, so it's just value separated by commas. Nowadays, you can change it to be not commas, uh, maybe a tab or a pipe operator, which is the vertical line. <laughs> um, so, but um, I we just call them CSVs. Not to make it simple. Um, so the structure and order are very important because you will have row one, two, three, four, five. They are in orders. So sometimes you may care about their uh, orders. Also, it involves a lot of joins. So in SQL, there's um, uh, uh, if you are data scientist, then you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes very simple. Um, statistical calculation will require you do a lot of aggregation and join it back to yourself. Um, so a lot of joins. So CSV query could be very, very long because of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, something I think uh, most of you will be familiar with. Um, a graph data is different. So knowledge graph. Are consist of triples. So we can't just store data like, you know, just, oh, rows, columns. Um, we will store them uh, in a more complex structure that you can have things nested inside because it's not 2D anymore. You can have things inside things. <laughs> so 
uh, the most common um, the most common format will be um, uh, we call them RDF or XML format. So um, XML is extensible extensible markup language. Uh, RDF is uh, like the one I showed you before, uh, relational data um, format. So a TTL turtle sometimes cool is a, um, yeah it's just names you know, trying, uh, uh, trans uh, RDF triple language. I, I rarely use I just call it turtle so. I don't even know the name, so <laughs> not very important. Uh, JSON LD is something that uh, we have to pay attention. So JSON file, um, some of you may be familiar with, almost like a Python dictionary. Um, so JSON LD just means that it's like a JSON format, uh, but for link data. Okay, so we would use JSON LD quite a lot uh, in working with Terminus DB. So. Um, uh, also, um, data is, uns is unstructured. So uh, unstructured is uh, not really means that there's no structure, but um, it's not like a table that um, it's uh, their orders and stuff. Basically, um, you know when you work with dictionary. Dictionary is not ordered, right? So it's similar. Data does not have an order. It's just have relations with each other. Okay, so uh, it does not matter if you say um, A first or B first, they are in the same picture. Okay, so. Um, so the advantages for storing data in a knowledge graph is that um, I think I have uh, already mentioned it before. You can have data with a very complex structure, a nested structure, and then, um, but you can easily also find the relations between things. Um, for example, if you query or find want to find an answer about something, um, in a let's say you have family members, so family tree. So if you want to find who is your grandmother, who is your mother's mother, okay, um, then you have to maybe make a join because you want to find out who's your mother's mother, right? <laughs> to find your grandmother. But in a knowledge graph, you can just say, oh, I have this me and this person and the relations is that, uh, you know, we have a, you know, a path relations of going from me to this person, which is my grandmother, is mother of another person, and this person is the mother of another person. So it doesn't need a join because it's already joined in the database. You just need to go through that path to find your grandmother. <laughs> okay. Um, so you just, just need to traverse the graph without doing data manipulations, like joining or aggregation. So that's quite good. Um, so a schema is very important in this sense, because um, if without a schema, it will go back to the data lake thing, which is um, a lot of data flowing inside a lake, but you don't know where to find them, right? So you need a schema. So you know in a family tree, what information is stored there. Um, relationship between people, but also maybe some extra information, the age, the gender. Gender is important. Otherwise, I don't know my parents who would be mother, who would be father, right? So um, that's quite important in this sense, only in this sense, uh, of course. Uh, uh, it's not in a sense of, oh, gender, uh, you know, in the broader terms, it would be uh, not, not like that, not uh, only, you know, male and female and thing, but in a family tree, biological sense, yes, it, it uh, is like this. So, um, yeah. So, um, so now, since we have the document API, uh, we will have, uh, we can just like, as said before, that we build a schema in Python by just defining classes. So in orient, uh, object-oriented programming, like JavaScript, 
and Python who allows object-oriented programming, that's quite easy, right? Because a class can be uh, inherited from another class and have all these different attributes. And um, so, um, so in Python, there are lots of uh, base classes. So um, you have, so now we are talking more about Python here. So um, you can inherit different class. So um, we have to know, so that's why when we do graph data modeling in Terminus DB, we have to know the base classes in Terminus DB because every single thing are uh, uh, inherited from these. So um, they will have the same property. For example, a document class, we have the, you know, all document class, uh, we have share some uh, same property that are or inherit from the document documents base class. Okay, so uh, that's the tricky bit that objects are now cause of document. I will talk about that later. Um, so uh, actually now, um, an object. So it's well, it's quite a, a abstract name. It's uh, it's just a in object oriented programming. Everything is an object, right? In Python, where everything is an object. So, um, what does it mean uh, an object in Terminus DB? So, um, an object you can think of as a collection of information. So, typically, an object can have multiple properties. So, that would be a collection of information, right? You have. So, each time you have object and a property, then it's a triple, right? So, you it's a collection of triples, an object, basically. So um, you can have, um, you know, uh, so you can also have uh, things that, uh, you know, uh, link together. So uh, there's two types of properties I will talk about later. So um, they could be a, a, just an integer or a string, so they're data type properties, or an other object, so you can link the the two objects together, okay? So let's put it this way for now. Um, so these are objects or course of document. So um, why we rename them? Uh, because uh, just remember this for now, object will always be embedded. So that's why it's less confusing to call it sub documents because uh, like documents, they are just documents, but they will always be embedded. <laughs> um, so it, we would, and no, not use an ID to reference them. So documents are the same thing as object, but they would reference each other using an ID so that they would not be embedded. So that's the only difference between objects or sub document and a document. That uh, they would, so sub document will always be embedded, document will be referenced by ID. So, so what does it mean? You will see what it means in a bit. So, um, uh, imagine, and now we have, um, now we, uh, an example of that would be an address. So uh, I like online shopping a lot, so I use Amazon. <laughs> um, so in Amazon, you can store multiple address, right? Because I used to have an office, not now, but um, so I have, I have my object address, I have my own address. So uh, when I buy some stuff, it could be an equipment for the object. It could be I want to send it home to add in to my home studio. So um, for convenience, I store two addresses in Amazon, right? So uh, in Amazon, let's say I have an address object called home and an address object called office under my account, okay? Um, so when I buy something and then let's say I buy a monitor, I want to send it to the office. So when I buy it, I can choose the address and other stuff, right? So I tell Amazon, hey, this monitor, please send it to my um, home address, uh, sorry, my office address. So Amazon will be, okay, got it. But the problem is that Amazon, uh, of course, Amazon will give the, my address to the, the, the warehouse or the seller to uh, send it to this address, right? But Amazon won't, um, tell the factory, let's say, uh, or the work, uh, the warehouse, Amazon won't tell the warehouse, oh, hey, please send uh, the 
send this monitor to uh, Cherry's Chuck's um, office because the warehouse will be, huh? Where is it? <laughs> I want the actual address. So um, what happened is that if an address is a subdocument, so whenever Amazon send this information to the warehouse, it will always embedded actual address, not a reference to, oh, and the Chuck's accounts uh, office. No, it's uh, the street number, the street, uh, you know, which uh, postcode, which uh, city. So it would just print it out almost and then send it to the warehouse. So they got it. They don't care if it's my office or my home. They just know that this monitor is sent to this address. Okay. So um, this is how uh, sub documents can be useful uh, in this, uh, this sense. Okay. So some data you want to always embed them. So that's useful for sub document. Um, so let's move on to documents and see the difference. Documents um, is, I'm just looking at the time. Okay, so documents are a, a just object, or you can think of it as object, but they won't be embedded, okay? So they are just a thing and uh, they always have an ID so others can reference to it. Um, this is, uh, this also have an advantage because sometimes you can't always just embed it or the information. Um, an example would be, uh, let's say, uh, Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Facebook, uh, every users is, uh, well, I'm quite old, right? I'm using Facebook anyway. <laughs> so Facebook, everybody understand. Um, so I am, I am an, uh, I have an account with Facebook. Okay. So I am, I'm Chuck Ting Ho on Facebook, okay, let's say, or Cherry Ho on Facebook. Um, so uh, I am, so I have a user account, I have a user ID, so people can always find me using my ID. Um, and then, for example, my friend, let's say my friend, uh, uh, my friend Thomas, okay, so um, Thomas also got an ID. So, um, why I don't always embed myself inside things? Because think about it. Um, this is Cherry, and then this is a friend of Thomas, right? But Thomas also add me as friends. So Thomas, friend of Cherry. So we are very good friends, right? So Cherry, friends of Thomas, Thomas, friends of Cherry. If I ask who are Cherry's friend and who is like, who knows Cherry, let's say. So sometimes, you know, if Thomas is friend of, um, you know, uh, Timmy, then, well, t you know, Thomas friends of Timmy, then maybe I know Timmy because, you know, we'll have mutual friends, Thomas. But uh, if I always embedded this, this will create a problem, not for Timmy because I have Cherry and then friends of Thomas. So Thomas, you will see that Thomas is friends of Timmy. That's not a problem. But the problem will occur if, Cherry, friends of Thomas, and then Thomas, friends of Cherry, and then, oh, Cherry's also friends of Thomas. <laughs> it will never end, right? There's an endless loop. So that's not good. Um, that's why sometimes it's good to uh, reference things as an ID, because I don't care about, you know, maybe the age or the pictures or like everything about Cherry, but only who is you know, the build a network of uh, friends, right? So then you can just say, oh, Sherry and Thomas, that we are mutual friends, okay? So it's a bi-directional relationship. Um, so uh, so that would be useful uh, if you just reference stuff by ID, okay? So, um, right. Uh, so in documents, we have a few default properties. So uh, yeah, it's well, it's confusing. Why there's a name here and name here? Um, so what I would say to people who read this uh, this slice is that at uh, the name, uh, so there's slash. So name, label, comment on the left hand side. They are the O 
the old names, they are confusing. That's why we renamed them uh, into ID, name, and description. Um, the reason that we have this confusion is that in the past, uh, well, for version 4.2 or before of Terminus DB, we follow, we strictly follow the semantic knowledge graph naming system. So that's how they call things, name, label, and comment. Uh, but we found that it's quite confusing for user because most people know them as ID, name, and description. So uh, we, we changed the names now. So for version 10 or above, yes, version 10 or above, uh, they are called ID, name, and description. So for today, you can forget about name, label, and comment. Just We will just use ID, name, and description. Uh, this here are just for your reference, okay? So, um, ID. So, ID, as the name suggests, is a unique identifier. Um, it's like a key in a SQL database. A name is just a more human readable name. Uh, it's, you know, because sometimes ID would be, it could be just a bunch of number because, for example, you have uh, a lot of citizens, so each of them got an ID, then well, it's uh, people may have the same name, right? Or same birthday. So you may give them a unique number as an ID to avoid, um, you know, confusion, but then it's not human readable. So you won't call someone by their number, right? So you would call them by their name. So name is okay to be repeated. It's, uh, you know, human readable and you can even put emoji in it. Um, well, if you, you know, uh, Python 3 above, you can use emoji, so that's okay. <laughs> um, description uh, is the description of an object. It's uh, You can have a longer description of describing this person, like a bio, or um, if you introduce your friend, then not just, oh, hey, this is uh, my friend Thomas. You can also say, oh, uh, Thomas uh, is working in uh, this company that uh, they they know uh, about these or what they like, so your friend know a little bit about them, and then you know what conversation they can have. You know, oh, you can help me with my work, so they can start talking, right? So that will be description a little bit more about this object. So, um, yeah, so uh, this is um, these are all properties and their default. Um, so enum. Uh, it's quite simple. It's just like enum in SQL. Is uh, you can think of it as uh, multiple choice. <laughs> um, so you only accept this uh, set of values, uh, nothing else. It's not like a, a a free text that you can enter anything. Uh, you have to choose from those. So uh, it's quite common if you have a form that people fill it in, like uh, which country you live in, then you, there's a list of countries, right? So yeah, those kind of things. So um, properties, there's actually two type of properties. Um, there's data property and uh, object data type property, actually, and object properties. So um, there are some extra information here that I included, um, but it's not very crucial in what we are doing today. It's just extra information when you are working with other semantic graphs that um, this is how the semantic graph community talk about properties is that property itself um, will have a domain and a range. So if you look at a triple, right? So it's object, object, and pro uh, predicate. So a property is kind of in reverse, kind of. So is if you put property in the middle, there's domain and range. So you look at it on the different side. So a domain of a property is a what a class of it, and then the range would be what type of data it is. So, um, for example, uh, address. So, if I have a I have a contact number, so it's a it's a, it's a number. So, um, so I would be like the property is contact number, and the domain would be the address, and the range will be a number. So, um, that's that. But it's not very important. I don't. I won't explain too much today. Uh, you can look look more into it if you're interested in semantic graph. So data property and object property, two types of property. That's what you need to know for now. Data property or data type property, it just means that this property, uh, the range of this property 
is just um, you know integer boolean or disappearing types in Python basically uh, some or some other extra stuff like daytime. Um, uh, you can also have like uh, unsigned bytes, decimal range, all this stuff. It's quite complicated. Um, or they are called literal type property because they're just literals. They're just words, uh, characters, integers, numbers, um, which is in contrast to object property that is um, another object that you define. So, um, or other documents that you define. So, uh, like I said, so if I have a user, a user is a document, and then there are different address, like in Amazon, then address could be a subdocument or object. Then, um, you know, the, the saved address could be a, uh, a, a object property. So account user, we have a saved address with this address, this address, this address. So. Um, yeah. And how to represent data in a knowledge graph. So we'll do it by example. Um, because uh, we have an example here, but this one, I would use it in the demonstration as well. So I won't go too much into detail of uh, talking about this right now. I would, I think it's easier when I, I explain it while I'm doing the demo, but right now it's about uh, an hour since uh, I started. So um, I will skip over this and then um, go to the slice of uh, of how to install Terminus DB and um, you know how to play along or play later. <laughs> so uh, you have to get the bootstrap, which is available on our GitHub. It's called Terminus DB. Uh, so terminus db, terminus db, bootstrap. And then that would uh, give you uh, a script to download the Docker image of terminus db quite easily. Uh, that would be the latest version, which is the a beta version, which is v10 or both. And then uh, for Python client, you just need to um, do a pip install, terminus db, Python client. Then you will have a v 10.0.13, if I remember correctly. So let's take a uh, five minutes break. Uh, this time you can also ask questions. Um, I will just quickly refill my water and then I'll be back. So um, yeah, uh, I will just quickly run to my kitchen and grab some water and I'll be back, okay? Okay, so we'll be back at 11. Three. <laughs> how, how. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Maybe I'll give a few more seconds. If there's no questions right now, uh, you can also ask questions later in Get a Town as well. Terry, can yes. you hear me? And yes. uh, Slido has two questions. Do you have okay. the link? Slidos, let me give me a sec to open Slido. Okay, there are two questions. Okay, cool. Uh, what's the difference between Terminus DB and Neo4j? So, um, Neo4j is a um, it's like the granddaddy, I would say, of um, of uh, open source graph database. So, um, in Terminus DB, we build stuff uh, all with, because you can see the, the history is that we try to 
build stuff with triples. That's uh, how semantic graph work. Um, so we, at the beginning of developing Terminus DB, we straightly follow all these, um, uh, how, you know, the semantic knowledge graph work, right? Um, so things are quite difficult to use at the beginning, but now since we um, have the document API, it will be much easier as I will show you. So Neo4j is, um, I would say that they just have a, um, a graph database. They don't really use um, follow straightly of this uh, semantic graph kind of how semantic graph work. Uh, so I think most of the time you won't see the, the difference when you do data modeling, unless you go into something super complicated, then uh, you will see that, oh, maybe some sometimes you can't um, do it in Neo4j or something. Um, but Neo4j, uh, their query language, uh, Cypher, is uh, also text-based. But you see Terminus DB, we will, um, you know, the API would accept a JSON file, uh, J well, not JSON file, but uh, a JSON. So uh, JSON LD to be uh, precise. So uh, so actually there's advantage of using JSON rather than text because uh, text as all of you who use SQL knows that is uh, very subjected to injection and all this stuff. So um, so yeah, uh, that that's I would say that's the main difference. Uh, you can see most directly and immediately. Um, but Neo4j, because uh, it's, um, it has uh, a longer history, so they're more mature. I would say they have more functionalities that is already added in. Um, uh, Terminus DB is relatively new, but I think that it uh, got more potentials in the future. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the main, main difference, I would say, for now. <laughs> um, so we can also have the nested data structure with NoSQL. Yes, I really get what's the benefit of the graph database. So uh, nested data structure, uh, something like NoSQL is in Mongo is um, is kind of it like it's like the difference between Neo4j and Terminus DB. Like it doesn't really, it's something that looks similar, um, but deep down because of how it works, you can't really, for example, cross referencing. Uh, so sub-document wise, you can maybe build similar things like the Amazon thing won't have a problem, but uh, the Facebook things may have a problem because you can't embed it, um, you know, a, a, a circle inside. So um, yeah, so um, so I I would say that uh, something like NoSQL could be a uh, you know could do things some of the things that uh, you can do in Terminus DB but not all of them. <laughs> oh, so uh, it really depends on uh, your use case. If you have a super complicated schema, uh, like the one that uh, my colleague is working on, which is a historical uh, data, which all the data are from different sources, super complex because you know, all these uh, civilizations are fighting with each other uh, in different time or in the history, then, well, then you may need something that can handle more complex stuff like Terminus DB. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I hope that answer your questions. Um, so, um, I would move forward from now so we can have a demonstration. So I guess, uh, oh, yeah, so it's uh, I guess of you all good, and then we we will leave these uh, closing at the end. So let's uh, let's jump into the demo, or actually, let me think. Um, yeah, I'll jump into the demo and then um, come back later. So um, I have some stuff here, but I want to start from scratch. So let me think. Okay, so this I don't need. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm. I just tested it yesterday to make sure that it works, and uh, <laughs> so I have to delete some of these stuff and stuff from scratch. Okay, so, um, okay, so oh, right. So don't say. So this is my new project. So I only have two things in it: <laughs> the CSV that I just showed you uh, in the, well briefly in the slides. Um, so this is uh, all these um, employees you know, um, people basically, they have an ID, 
they have their name, they have their title. Oh, I hope it's not too small. Maybe I can zoom in. Let's see. Zoom in is better. So they have the name, they have the title, and um, which team they belong to, and who are their manager, if there's any. Okay, like that. And uh, the the context. So actually, it's uh, well, it may be nicer if I. Hmm. A second. It would be nice if I so show it in slides. So wait a second, maybe I'll come back here. Okay. So, yeah. So this is easier to see because there are some missing data here. Um. So this is the employee data. It describes the structure inside a company. And this is the contact data. Um, you have the ID, the contact number, address, and postcode. Okay. So this is a, just an example. So there's only four people in this company. Maybe they are a startup, so they are very, very small. <laughs> um, they all live in the UK as well, I think. But anyway, um, so uh, first of all, we have to think about documents. So I think it's quite straightforward that we will make all these employee documents. And maybe the address of document, um, like what I've talked about before. So let's do that. Um, yeah, I would just jump into it here. Okay, so let's get uh, that going. Oh. Yeah, so a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Let me clear it up for you. Oh, ah. Okay, so I'm in a new directory. I'm starting a new project. Uh, my Docker container is running. So I hope this is all big enough. I'll make it bigger. So my Docker container is running at this endpoint okay so this local host uh the port is 6363 and then so oops not you sorry um i just deployed something a few days ago and not you and then here okay <laughs> so uh this is brand new now so as you can see there's only two csvs and some catches that we just ignore uh, for our convenience so um uh, in this environment it's my development environment, but uh, it's okay because the only thing is that I have Terminus, D, uh, Terminus DB installed and also I need to have pandas. So um, I'll do a pip list, which is a dangerous zone because I got so many things. But <laughs> the only thing that you have to pay attention is to have um, Terminus DB client here. This one, oh, no, no, not this one. Uh, where is it? Uh, here, Terminus DB client. So 10.0.12 uh, or 13 actually should be. Uh, why is it 12? Uh, maybe it's not updated, that's why. But yeah, you should have 13, but they are more or less the same. I just patched uh, small things a few days ago, but that's okay. Um, also pandas. Pandas, we love pandas. We are pandas. Uh, PA, right, so pandas. Uh, the version doesn't matter too, too much. Uh, the most updated version will be good. So, um, yeah, that's it. So I have those. So what I'm going to do is I should go back here um, to start a project. So I can use Terminus DB command. Uh, after you pip install Terminus DB, you have access to this command. And if you are not sure, you can type help to see. So we have a lot of things. We can work with Terminus DB command. Um, uh, this command, I may rename it later. So, uh, But just so you know that we have an extra CRI tool included if you have uh, installed Terminus DB. So um, we can start a project just like Django. So <laughs> um, I get the idea from Django, as you can see. Uh, Terminus DB uh, start project, OK? Okay, so I need to have a project name. So how should I call it? I'll just call it with the name of the, you know, um, the direction here. So demo workshop new. Oh. Wait, uh, where am I running the endpoint? So um, now I'm doing it locally, so I can just do it locally. But um, you can also use Terminus X, like I uh, mentioned briefly, which I'll show you later. Another thing that I've done with Terminus X. So uh, if you're using Terminus X, you can find all this information about endpoint login detail in there. Um, so um, just just uh, use local for now. 
Uh, if you have your Docker container, it should be fine. So just press enter. And then you will have a convict uh, JSON and uh, schema.py. So here, convict JSON and schema.py. So this is how you connect to your endpoint. And then this is um, the, the example of a schema. Okay. So it's just an example. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we, we are not using it uh, today. So. Uh, but it will be useful in the future because when you build your own schema, you may forget, oh, how do I uh, inherit the document? So you do it like this. And then how do you uh, document it? Or how what is a document? This all here explains it for you. So um, right now, I would uh, cheat a little bit by uh, having my other thing <laughs> that is already done. Uh, I'll just copy it over so I won't make any mistakes because uh, we don't have all days today. So uh, if I make a mistake, it will be uh, taking a long time. So I don't want that. <laughs> so so I will go back to, sorry about my messiness. I'm a very messy person, as you see. So I will just copy and paste here, and then I will explain. Okay. So this is what I, I could write for this phone book. Uh, phone book for awesome startup. This is what this database is. And then, um, so remember we have uh, two employees, they are the managers, so they created this file. Uh, they are very uh, cool because they are using Terminus DB, okay? <laughs> so um, they have, so you just need to do like, uh, uh, this is Python typing. So uh, um, yeah, so I won't explain too much. I just assume that you know um, Python, so uh, to save time. So. These are just uh, things you inherit from typing. So uh, you can use it later um, when you have attributes or different uh, properties. You also have to import from the client, import these objects for building the schemas, right? Okay, so uh, we have enum. The team is an enum because uh, in this company only got two teams. Uh, it can't be something else. So we only have marketing and IT. So they are all named marketing and information technology, spelled it all out. Um, <laughs> all right. And um, address is a document, but it's a sub-document. So that's why I added here, a uh, sub-document. Um, so it doesn't matter what you put in here. Only thing matters is you have a sub-document attribute here. Uh, then address will be a sub-document. So this one, we have address number, which is an integer, street, town, postcode, there, yeah, strings, okay. Employee, these are the people. They will have name and title, and then there'll be strings. Address will be an address object here, okay. And then manager, it could be optional, means that someone may not have a manager, like the managers themselves. Uh, they will be employee if they have. Um, and contact number is just a string. Uh, not a number because uh, it's not a good idea to store contact number in a number actually because the zeros will be gone so you don't want that um right so that's this okay now uh to put this schema that we have done here beautiful schema into the database so what we have to do is to do a terminus db commit it's like it, right? <laughs> now it's like it. So um, it's connected to the demo and then the database and then it's updated. So uh, how we can see if it's updated? Well, most of the time you can just trust it by uh, looking at this um, because you just put all this in the database so they should be the same. But if you don't trust me, <laughs> you can do a terminus DB or docs. So all of these can be seen in the help, so I won't spend too much time to explain. So if you type schema, or if you don't know how to use all docs, you can also do help, you know, it will show you, but I know how to use it, so just type it. The schema will give you the schema back, the all docs schema. So you see, oh, it's there, you know, so it's, uh, it's in the uh, JSON. This is uh, the JSON LD. So this is what we sent to the uh, the backend, the database. So like I said, uh, difference from uh, from Neo4j is that Cypher is a text base, but uh, Terminus DB is working with Terminus uh, with 
a JSON LD, so they are in this format. Okay. Um, so yes. Uh, well, it's quite complicated to look at it, but I'm used to look at it, so I'm quite good at looking at them. But uh, yeah, most of the time I, I would just uh, not. So this is almost like for developers, right? So we just oh, have a look, but that's fine. It means that we have the schema. And then if you're confused, just look at this, okay? Oh, right. So now we have a schema. Now we have this CSV. Uh, what should we do? So for those of you who have really good vision, you will see that, oh, we have a import and export CSV. Uh, that may be useful, but that's not what I'm going to show you now because what I'm going to do is to use a Python script. Yay. Um, so Python script, because I, for example, like the street, remember in the CSV? Yes, I have five minutes, I know. <laughs> so uh, in, in the streets, we have all well, these commas and spaces. So I want to marshal them. I want to do some cleaning, data cleaning before I uh, insert it. So I'll just copy and paste and demo and explain later. So working with the time here. <laughs> okay, so the workshop new, I need to have a new file. Uh, insert data.py, okay, and then put it here. Okay, so again, we have to import a lot of things. Uh, I don't have time to explain everything, but I'll just show you the basic concept is that I get the file and then I manage the file. And I just need to, because what I've done here, I have import this schema, right? I've import this. So I can just now create address object using all this data that I've get from the CSV and then put it in. So it become uh, an actual address object itself, okay? So employee, same logic. I just read the CSV file and then make a, some, make full employee object, right? The problem is that, you know, we have to link Ring, link the manager back. So uh, the advantage of using this employee object is that I can just call the employees uh, dot manager. Okay. So because it's just a Python object, you can just access the attribute by using this and you can link them simply by this or elegantly done with Python scripts. Um, and then you just need to call the client. This is wrong because the other one I'm using terminus X, so I should actually copy these back in here. Um, yep. So, oop, no. Uh, my, I always got tripped up with the IDE. That's fine. It's called new now. And I don't have a team, so it's just different. I don't use the token. That's for terminus X. Um, I just need to do this. And then I just need to insert all this stuff that I have, uh, all these objects that I put in the list. They are the list. Oh, no, actually, they are documents. Oh, sorry, sorry. They are dictionaries that uh, I've stored these objects. So I need to put these objects into uh, into the, the back end. So I call the values of the dictionary. They will give me a list, and I put it back. So oh, this is not needed. Yeah, that was something weird. So now I have this, so I can do it with my uh, Python. So Python. Um, insert data, the pie, yes. So, oh, it looks like nothing happened, but again, use the magic command here or docs. You see that I have all these stuff. So these are all the employees. You can see that, for example, each employee will have an ID that is given to them. And also uh, you see that, can I spot it? Can I spot it? Can I spot it? There will be managers. So address also got an address object, but the difference is that if, uh, if I found the manager will be, uh, so address you can see is uh, embedded. So there's a uh, postcode it's embedded in the address here, but the managers, they will be just by the ID. So here, managers, they'll just be referenced by the employee ID. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that, it's just a, Employee, you know, it's just like that. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So that's that. And um, okay. Uh, and then I think that's. Oh, is it the 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 the, the deadline? Okay. Oh, one more minute. I have a grace uh, graceful minutes. Thank you. Um, so what I'm gonna do now here, if I can go back to my uh, yeah presentation. So 
I think I don't have time to show you Terminus X, but um, whoops. So what you can do is, and uh, the most important thing is to uh, get this, uh, get this link because uh, the, the advantage of this link is that I will give you a bash that you can share on LinkedIn, share to all your friends or your colleagues how um, amazing uh, you are because you have done this workshop. Well done. You have done this. Um, also, uh, I will give you the, all these slides if you fill in this form. So uh, it's just basically and then workshop. Uh, uh, why is it 02? I don't know. I should be all free. But anyway, um, 1002 is the right uh, address, I think. Let's see. Oh, it's not right. Oh, it should be all. Oh, why is it? Oh, okay. I know why. It's just a slice. Uh, okay, let me. Can I copy this, please? Okay. Well, I know how to do it. It's just. Yeah, if you. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just the link is not what you see it is. So if you go here. So if you uh, type this in, not like me, just click on it, but type on it, then you will see. Um, oh, this is oh, this is wrong. Sorry, I would I will fix this in a bit. Uh, I can fix it live now. No, uh, okay. Give me like uh, use this link after five minutes, <laughs> then I will fix it, and then it will work, and then you would uh, you would be able to fill in the form, and then you would get all these uh, awesome badges and uh, also the notes. So. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm running out of time. I would uh, fix the link in five minutes, but uh, yeah, please, uh, you know, note down this link and then um, you will be able to access the form. So that's it.